Hello, and welcome to my demonstration, Just Because. Just because of all the friendships and fun that I have had and made throughout the last 50 years as a member of NAFAS. So I'm starting my de first design in a container that was made by the lady who was the chairman of the club that I first joined in 1972. It's a pottery container and I have a pin holder in the base because we're trying to be a little more environmentally conscious and we are using less floral foam. So I'm going to start using an allium. This is Allium Porum Musselbra. For those of you that are in the know, you will know that that means that it is a leek flower. So all my leeks that have gone to seed, I have allowed them to flower. Uh, these are the flower buds, obviously, and they are will open up and they will dry. So I never ever ignore my vegetable patch. So starting off with a few of the alliums, isn't that one just a wonderful shape? So it can come in to the bottom of the design here and I have the three alliums in. So you can have a quick look at that. And then I have some of my hostas, which I've been madly fighting the slugs off. So I have Hosta Sibaldiana and another little one, which is quite a new one to me, which is called The Night Before Christmas. Now I have no idea why you would call a hosta the night before Christmas, because hostas obviously are not up and about uh, at Christmas time. They're all dormant. So putting in the hosta leaves just to frame a central point for me. Uh, as I said, quite a simple design on the pin holder in this wonderful container. The container was made and it, the glaze was actually made from the ash where the elm trees were burnt during Dutch elm disease. So they in fact have a story all of their own, the glaze on there. So we have the hosta leaves very simply in the base. And now I want to put my main flowers in. So as you can see, quite a quick and simple design. And I, for which I have gerbera. This is a gerbera called Kermit. I know we're all very familiar with the chrysanthemum that is called Kermit, but this is the gerbera Kermit. I have had many, many hours of fun and friendship, made many friendships uh, in my time with Nafas, and I do love doing flowers. So just keeping a very simple line of the gerbera to echo the shape of my container. That lovely rounded shape. So bringing these down and through the whole design. The hostas, did you know they're edible? Uh, I know all the slugs and snails think they're edible and they all like to eat them, but they are actually edible for humans as well. I'm told they taste somewhat like asparagus if you pick them when they're tightly filled and before they actually come out. So putting my last gerbera in, knocking one of the others out at the same time. But no, it wants to be much more recessed than that. Let's pop him deep in, in there. So there we have my first design, which is using a container that I was given and made by a very good friend. For my next arrangement, I'm using a stand that belonged to my mother, and I am actually using foam. I have already covered the foam with a plant material, so you don't have to watch me just putting in and out. Uh, lots of little bits. 
uh, and this is Kamikiparis Boulevard. Uh, so it's one of the conifers, but it has this lovely greyish sheen to it. To give the extremities of the design, I'm going to use some of the black bamboo. Now the stand is one that my mother never, if ever, used, or rarely, if ever, used. Um, partly because it was unstable. It would uh, tipple, topple over at the first excuse because it didn't have a base attached to it. But luckily, I married somebody who can weld. So he got onto it for me and he cut a plate and he has welded it to a plate so I can actually now use it. So this is uh, a reminder of my mother who was a founder member of Pershaw Flower Club along with my father's mother and my father's sister and that was how really I got started in flowers so this is part of my history as well so to put in my next plant material I have a little bit a few leaves of the Aspidistra and I want these to create a smooth texture as a good contrast to the roughness of the boulevard and just looping them back in and pinning them back with their own stems. So yes, my mother was, she didn't flower arrange a lot, uh, although my grandmother and aunt did. And so whilst I suppose it was inevitable that I would become involved. Aspidistra elatial, cast iron plant, supposedly one of the easiest house plants to grow. Uh, I have to say that uh, they do th seem to thrive on neglect, but if you want wonderful, uh, perfect leaves, they do need a little bit more care and attention than you might, than you might otherwise think. So just curling these around to create interest in the centre of the arrangement. The Canicuparis Boulevard uh, was actually growing here when we moved here. Uh, and there are a lot of things growing in this garden that I don't know the varieties of. But this one I do because when I was in my uh, very early 20s, I left college and I got a job for a brief period uh, in the potting shed at Pershaw College of Horticulture. And so we had a potting machine with a line of four of us where the compost dropped off the top and we picked up the plants and we potted them on uh, at that point. And one of the jobs that we had at the time was to pot on Camicaparis Boulevard. So as we had to put a label in each one, it's one I will never forget. So we've got uh, a width and a very heavy centre at the moment to come at the other side to the black bamboo. I have some of the Formium, Formium Cookianum. Now this one is cream wave, but it's not, it's right from the centre of the plant, so it's not very variegated. So we can come in on this side with the Formium. And again, I want to create a little bit of enclosed space on this side just by looping them around and stapling them. So manipulating them, if you like. Let's bring that one upwards and staple it to the other one. So I did raid my garden for this arrangement. Uh, I have bought some things as well, but I mostly raided my garden. So to come in on the black bamboo side of the design, and the black bamboo is Phyllostachys nigra, but I also cut 
some of my Turks cap lilies or Lilium martigan. Aren't they just stunning? I don't know the particular variety. Uh, they are, uh, they were, the bulbs were a present from a friend who came to stay about 10 years ago. She bought me five bulbs and when I told her that I was gardening on an acid soil she said oh no you'll have to grow them in a pot then. Now I always thought that these particular lilies were not pH sensitive but I have humoured her and I have grown them in a pot ever since and they are doing very very well. This year I have 10 flowers on them so the bulbs have multiplied. So following the line of the black bamboo with the Turks cap lilies. Lilies of course every part of the plant is toxic uh, and particularly the pollen if it gets onto your cat's fur they will lick it off and it is highly toxic to cats. So please be aware of that. Everybody keeps asking me how I've avoided the lily beetles. I don't mention them too loudly because I'm not sure that they've got as far as West Wales yet and I'm hoping that they don't because these really are just part of a, a beautiful, beautiful display out in my courtyard. So to come into the centre of the arrangement I cut a rose. Now I don't know the variety of this one, this was growing here when we moved here but it's quite a pretty rose has a sort of an apricotty colour to it. So we can cut some of those down for the centre. They are pretty. I believe they're scented but I have no sense of smell. I haven't had for uh, nearly 20 years now. So it doesn't, uh, I can't smell them at all. The Aspidistra leaves I have oiled with an olive oil. I've just put a bit of olive oil th across the leaves with a cloth. Uh, it does seem to give them a really good shine. I didn't use best olive oil, I have to say. I did use the uh, cheaper one that I keep for my flower arranging. It's amazing what we keep for flower arranging, isn't it, and what we do other than uh, just the flowers on the plants. So just grouping those through the centre. Quick look. And then I also have some more of the formiums. Uh, this one is, I think, Maori Queen. It has a, a red and green and cream effect, but I have manipulated it. I've made like box chain out of them and it gives them this nice different form and texture, which can come to the opposite side there. Again, I thought they sort of echoed the lilies a little bit. There you go. So, Formiums uh, are a New Zealand plant, of course, come from New Zealand. And this one, the Cookie Anum is the softer version, and the Tenax is the stiff one. I realise I'm probably teaching my grandmother how to suck eggs when I say things like that, but I thought that would, uh, some people don't know. I've just propped one against one of the other stems to again create a circle. We have one more to go in there. And then my final flowers, have a quick look. My final flowers are some bought flowers, which are the Anthurium and I believe Midori, but some of the smaller ones of those. These of course, you know, everybody thinks they're artificial, don't they? 
if you uh, people always want to touch them uh, and if you touch them they go blue where they've been touched they don't like being touched so we have the two Midori can come on the left hand side So, so there we have my second design inspired by my mother's stand. And now in those immortal words, now for something different. So I have a plaque that I have made using rubus and willow and I wove it while it was all fresh and I've attached to it some tubes that I have covered in string or twine, uh, dropped another little tube inside so I can keep my tubes clean and just decorated with a little bit of plaited twine just to give a little bit more interest. Now I have pre-prepared this one quite a lot because I have used yellow roses and I have tied uh, Hedera colchica sulphur heart leaves to the roses with a little bit of raffia. And I'm just going to drop these into the tubes so that the background really makes a, a major part of the design. I think the Hedera, it's a little bit of a shame that they changed the name because uh, to me, Paddy's Pride is so much more suitable. It's, it's a real good name for it. But I suppose Sulphur Heart is also very descriptive. So just dropping the roses into the tubes with the ivy leaves, rearranging the ivy leaves a little to not be quite like feet sticking out. So a very quick and simple design. I think the rubus is probably one of the reasons we live where we live, because when we came to see it and I saw all the rubus growing, I thought to myself, that'll do, because I tried several times to get rubus, have a quick look at that, several times to get rubus growing where we lived in Worcestershire and always been unsuccessful. Uh, but when I moved here, I think I could maybe momentarily regret having rubus because rubus is a real thug of a plant. It uh, is so invasive, it takes so much controlling. Just adding in a little bit of the wild ivy, this one is Hedera helix, making sure it's going into the tube. And this is just to create me a little bit more uh, depth and movement to frame the whole arrangement. So as I said, a very quick, simple one once you've made your plaque. And one more piece. This can Just hooking it back in so that it loops backwards, creating spaces and depth to the whole arrangement. So there we have my something a little bit different. To complete the differing mechanics for this demonstration, uh, I'm using wire netting in a vase that is very precious to me. The vase was given to me by a friend whose aunt worked with Mrs Spry and it is a Constant Spry signed original. So I love using it but I have to say that it does not travel with me anywhere. It stays in the house because I would hate to break it. To give me the height of the design, I'm using the foxgloves or digitalis, uh, and we'll just put that in and just reinforce that with more of the digitalis. 
Yes, this uh, particular vase is just so lovely to use. And of course, designed for wire netting, because that is how Constant Spry arranged flowers. And I've put the netting in as I was taught when I worked at Winkfield Place, which is one of the Constants, was one of the Constant Spry group. To create my outline as well, I'm using some of the Centranthus. This is, used to be called Valerian. I grew up with it as Valerian, but it is now Centranthus. And there are, I have three colours of this. Um, there is the red, the white and the pink. Uh, and I brought all three with me when we moved here. But I've only got the pink and the red now. The white one has decided not to seed itself down and it's just disappeared, which is a little bit of a shame, but uh, there we go. So just creating the outline using the lower outline and the sort of the back outline using the valerian. So when you pick for wire netting, you have to make sure that you've got good curved stems that will go down into the water. So that's why we get this sort of more relaxed style of arrangement. I've also got a little bit of the toad flax or linum. Uh, this one will seed itself absolutely everywhere once you've got it in the garden. So I don't mind cutting it. And that one's an interesting one because the end of it has become fasciated. I don't know whether you can see that. Uh, the stems have grown together to create this sort of much more interesting shape to the flower. So come in with that one. This as I say grows absolutely everywhere once you've got it. Um, I don't mind that, I like things popping up amongst the stones and in walls. The digitalis of course was the uh, origin of the heart medication uh, which has treated so many people. So sometimes the old wives got it right, didn't they? Because they used to use digitalis box gloves to treat people. Didn't always get it right, but sometimes they did. So to emphasise the colours of this, I've decided to go with a foliage, which is this lovely dark purple fagus. The gorgeous colours on the fagus. Uh, and I always find that they, putting this dark purpley red in always acts as a good foil for other colours. Again, just making sure it goes deep enough in to get it into the water. And I've been very careful to pick from both sides of the tree so that I get some curves that go the opposite way. Something I was taught to do when I was started out flower arranging all those years ago, and which we seem to have sort of lost a little bit. Uh, we tend to, to pick and make it go where we want it to because it can, we can, because we're using foam. So putting a little bit of the smaller bits, don't waste anything, down into the center as a sort of a cover up. I always find that the uh, netting's perhaps a little bit easier to cover than foam. But there we go. Another couple of bits, sort that bottom piece off, or it won't reach the water. I did plant this here. Um, we have uh, a lot of trees, but there was not there wasn't a purple beach. We had a lot of the uh, ordinary, we've got a lot of ordinary beach, plain beach, and we've got southern beach, which is totally different. So when we moved here I thought no well, we'll put a copper beach in. If you want to glycerine it to keep it for the winter months uh, it glycerines beautifully but if you want the good colour on it you don't glycerine this one you glycerine the plain green one. So there's lots of tidbits of information. As I say, just making sure everything goes deep into the water to actually get it into the water. So you can have a quick look at that. Uh, 
so that I'll put a little bit more in towards the back here. So the next plant material I have is another tree. And you'll have realised by now I, I do like my garden plant material. So this one I think probably is just because I have the garden plant material available. Um, this is Tilia or Lime. And Lime is the tree that drops all that sticky stuff all over your car if you park beneath it uh, in towns. And it has this large leaf on it but we have uh, if you take all the leaves off and expose these uh, bracts that are like keys uh, it's it lasts very well once the flowers have changed to a seed head uh, this bract lasts quite well and I think the limey green just zizzes this up a little bit I'm not sure that zizzes is quite the uh, correct terminology but it'll do so I stripped all the leaves off this to show off the bracts and uh, I always remember when I was at Winkfield we used to have the summer party and they used to bring us into the flower rooms branches and branches of this that had got to be stripped off ready for use to decorate the marquee and it really was a task and a half to do it and we used to spend hours uh, playing with it, just taking the leaves off. Well, once I'd moved home and I wanted to use it for a flower festival, I was sitting in the garage at home, gaily taking the leaves off, when my father came in and said, could he help? So I thought, oh, another pair of hands. Yes, please, Dad. So I handed him a pair of scissors and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm stripping the lime. So I gave him two big branches and carried on with what I was doing. And he, uh, I turned round and there he was. He'd taken not just the leaves off, but all the bracts as well. So I was left with bare branches. Needless to say, he didn't help again. I'll have a quick look at how the flower arrangement is just evolving. And now I have a rose to put in. This is a garden rose. This one is a climber, which is Albertine. Just look at the flowers on that. Isn't it gorgeous? Obviously, they're not going to last. Uh, the, the open ones are not going to last particularly well, but the others will, and they will gradually come out. I just want to use that towards the centre of the design here. So I really wanted to use uh, a lot of garden material in this one because garden material is probably my first love in flower arranging. And aren't we lucky now that we're, we're using the British growers much more. So they are growing this type of thing for us. So we're able to buy much more uh, like our garden materials commercially produced. So we've got the rose in and then a plant material that I wouldn't normally have available at this time of year is the hellebore. This one's hellebore orientalis uh, and it's an interesting plant that uh, has this bract. Again it's a bract the flowers come in the middle and we've got the seed head in the middle. But I just thought they would bring that little bit of line in as well into here. Usually they've gone too far by now for me to use at this season but we've been getting those very very cold nights uh, and it seems to have helped things up a bit. My alcamilla is not out yet and that's normally out in June and here we are not, not far off the end of June and uh, my alcamilla is still not out. It's a bit of a shame really. So the hellebores were used by the healers in the villages to create uh, a wormer for children. They distilled it and created a wormer for children. But I'm not surprised that the uh, practice died out because hellebores are all totally toxic. So we need to be careful uh, not to eat hellebores and not to create infusions of them to worm our children. In fact, I understand that hellebores were used to poison Alexander the Great. 
one of his cupbearers um, was uh, betrayed him and spiked his wine with hellebore and Alexander died. Another lime green to come in. Uh, this is one that does not last in foam, so we can only really use it in wine netting or on pin holders or in tubes. Uh, and this is the tobacco plant or, or Nicotiana. And no, it isn't the one you smoke. It is just Nicotiana or the tobacco plant. So putting a little bit of that in to bring the lime green further over. And then uh, the Dianthus Sweet William Dianthus Barbatus, uh, which I've grown myself. So all of this currently is homegrown garden plant material. And isn't it nice to be able to do that, to grow things that you can use for your arranging? I normally don't cut, I have a cutting bed for sunflowers, not the sunflowers, some flowers, uh, in which I have this uh, Dianthus, the Sweet William, and indeed the tobacco. Uh, but other than that, I tend to cut, mainly, mainly only cut greenery from my garden because we do have such good flower supplies and really it's the greenery that I want to use much more of. We're tucking in some of the Sweet Williams. I thought it was a very touching thing that they used them for um, the royal wedding when Kate married William. They had Sweet Williams. It's quite a nice thing to do. If your name is William. These last enormously well. Um, I have some in a vase that I, I did in the kitchen uh, probably nearly three weeks ago. And they're still going strong. I have changed the water a couple of times, but they are still going strong. That one's just not doing what I want him to do. Move them over a little bit. You see, I mutter to myself when it's not quite going as I want it to. Which is not a good trait. I want to come out a little bit further this side with a little bit more weight. I hope you're enjoying the rest of the virtual show, Chasing Rainbows. Um, Nafas has given me so much pleasure over the years. And with all the competitors, the very, very clever competitors, exhibiting their designs, their interpretations of the competition schedule is fascinating. And if you have enjoyed it, please do join us for our live show, which is going to take place at Gloucester Cathedral on May the 12th and 13th of next year. That's 2023. One more to go, and it's just popping them at the back. So completely done with garden materials uh, and in the style of constant spry in a constant spry vase so there we have my garden arrangement mm -hmm.